about a trip that turned out to be the most surreal experience of my life. It all started off six to eight weeks ago when I got an invitation to attend what was, I suppose, a media day. Uh, to have a look at PXG at uh, Scottsdale National Golf Club. Scottsdale National Golf Club is uh, owned by Bob Parsons and uh, there was a media experience going on to see about the revamped PXG experience. There was very limited information as to what was going on and whilst I couldn't wait to get there, what was about to unfold was nothing like what I could have ever dreamed of. So it all started off 11 hour flight into Phoenix, Arizona. My wife came along for the trip as well, and we spent a couple of days acclimatizing in the Western Kierland Resort, uh, which is a very nice place. As you can see, we took it easy for a few days. It's got a couple of golf courses there, but there was no golf played whatsoever. It was a case of, like I said, just uh, taking life easy. Uh, Kierland Commons, great place, by the way, if you're ever up this uh, neck of the woods in Scottsdale. Kierland Commons, great place to get some food and drink. But it's not about the first two days, it's what happened the following morning when we get picked up and takes a journey 25 minutes north of Western Kiel and into Scottsdale National Park. UK. UK. Oh man, nice. All mm -hmm. right. Well, welcome. It's a nice 90 degrees here. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's too hot right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so you guys are going to the PXG house. That's going to be your first left. Okay. Right, stop, lovely. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for your help. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Yeah. We're in Jasmine Suite Two. I've got to say, just the driving range looks. Oh my word. Forget the driving range. This is our living room. Golf course out there, I don't know what that bit is. What else have we got? Mm. Tea, coffee, drinks. Bit of espresso, love an espresso. Oh, you're in anyway. Andy Sullivan, Tracy Sullivan. Ooh. Flip your neck. That's to avoid swearing. We've got this, which I was told when we arrived, this is our kind of like background on what is exactly happening. So we've got a detailed itinerary, and I'm smiling already because I've seen some of the things that are on there, and uh, it's gonna be an interesting few days. You're not gonna tell us, no? No. But I'll be interviewing somebody. That's all I can say. First of all, evening number one. We, as you see, we arrived, we got our remit as to where to be, and I think it was 6.30 to 7 in PXG House, which is effectively one of two clubhouses at Scottsdale National Golf Club. It's unbelievably impressive. Uh, so we were a little in awe straight away, but within five minutes, we ordered a drink. We're standing in a group of four or five people. I look to my right, and Gary Player is stood alongside me. Uh, so yeah, straight away, it's well, what's going on here. There was not many people that arrived at that point, and Gary then says to myself and my wife, would you like to come and sit down, have a little bit of a chat, of course, which we did, a, a number of other people joined us, and already things were just a little bit weird. Uh, that evening, there was uh, a number of tables of which we sat with the uh, PJ professional, Scott Langley. Um, that's who we had dinner with amongst uh, uh, another few other people, but again, uh, really nice fellow, by the way, Scott Langley, as was everybody that we'd met at this point, including very brief, briefly, Rene Parsons and Bob Parsons had been part of a presentation along with um, Brad Schweigert and uh, Mike Nicolette. Uh, I'll get onto those two people in a minute. Uh, anyway, we has a meal. After the meal, Bob Parsons taps me on the shoulder, comes and says hello, tells, uh, says what he likes about the channel, what he likes about, uh, well, with a private conversation, but again, something that I'm thinking, what is going on? Bob Parsons just comes over to me. He starts up a conversation. He said some very nice things, like I said, which I will uh, keep private. Um, we then goes back to the room and I 
it's jaw dropping stuff. It's like, what in God's name has just gone on? What has just happened? That's just not the things that happen to the average golfer. Um, so next morning, we've got, a, we've got a, a schedule. And the first thing I've got to do is to interview um, Brad Schweigert and Mike Nicolette. Is a brief um, look at the little chat that I had with those two guys. Uh, how, how long did you, you know uh, Bob Parsons prior to moving? Was that kind of, you known him a long while? Well, I, I knew him uh, going on in probably a couple of years. Yeah. You know, we played golf together and we're, I, right. I would say we were friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of had this idea, a vague idea of what he wanted to do at that point. Yeah. And asked me, you know, basically if I was interested. And yeah. I, I tried my best to talk him out of it, you know, because it's a yeah, tough industry. A, yeah. Tough industry. Yeah. And I said, look, I, Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy who knows who I am and I know who I'm not. I, I can't do this. Right. I'm not an engineer. I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a good designer, but I'm not an engineer. I said, but I know a guy who is your guy. This is... And he <laughs> said, who's that? I, and I said, <laughs> my boss. Will we ever see an ultimate golf club or is it the holy grail? Is it we just keep on pushing forward? Well, you know, I like to think from my own job security that we're never going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from Mike and Brad, we were on a time scale and I was then due to meet Bob Parsons where I had 25 minute slot to sit down on a one-on-one -on -one interview situation. And that's exactly what we did. We sat down. It was the most relaxed conversation. I say relaxed. It was as relaxed as it could be. I was a little bit nervous. Um, but... We had a great conversation again. He's a very, very friendly, approachable man. And uh, we had an unbelievably good chat. And again, it's a little bit, bit of a clip. And all these interviews will be coming out in full very, very soon. But it's a bit of a clip from my conversation uh, with Bob Parsons. Um, so when you started off, was, was the idea to create a premium brand product or just create the sort of ultimate golf club and then work backwards to where, where, where it was pitched in terms of the cost? Well, here's the deal. If, if you, you get there by spending a certain amount of money and you try to engineer the cost out of it, yeah. you will make compromises right, okay. you know, often and you will not be delivering yeah, what yeah. you originally yeah, I get that. developed. Okay? So what we do is we will not release a product until we make it significantly better. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, prior to the visit, to PXG and the chat with Bob Parsons, I'd not really got a great opinion of the man. I, 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 I knew he owned PXG, I knew he was a billionaire, I knew he was a, a, a very successful entrepreneur, um, but had I spent time uh, listening to him, looking at him in terms of his, his, his history and all the things he's achieved? No, I hadn't really, to be honest with you. Um, but over the next few days, what I found was somebody that was very, very humble, very friendly, uh, very approachable, um, I think very generous, probably a, a lot of things and a lot of words that I would, and I'm looking at some words that I wrote, that very happy, uh, lots of energy, um, and, and, and the thing I put down here was a lot of words that I would not necessarily associate with a billionaire. Um, and like I said, for him to be as approachable he was for somebody like me, uh, it was amazing, but that's not the end of it. Far from it. And like I said, full interview to come. So I'd finished speaking with Bob, and then our next thing was to go off to uh, get a taste of what the PXG experience is. And this is a, um, a package that they sell, that you as an individual can, uh, it's, don't get me wrong, it's for very wealthy people. Um, but the process is this, or part of the process, like I said, we went down to the driving range, which is again, as you can see, is set up incredibly well. Everything is, is jaw-dropping, it's that simple. It's jaw-dropping. Uh, and we got fitted. So we got a PXG Master Fitter, and we got fitted um, for a number of different products to try uh, and experience, like I said, this whole process. That itself was amazing, but when you look at who's alongside you and the people that are there, I mean, it's just, again, incredible. Um, here's a, a look at, again, at some of the people that I had a brief chat with uh, on this morning, and like I said, there's more to come on the morning of this fit that we experienced uh, with PXG. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Look at that. Nice swing. Beautiful golf swing. You're playing too much golf, Larry. Get that on camera. Playing too much golf. Get that on camera. So at every, at every level and at pro level, there's, there's, there's benefits to be made, and you're seeing the gains as well, yeah? Yeah. I, as, a, I mean, as a professional golfer, you have the opportunity to really play anything. anything. Yeah. So, um, but I went with PXG because I was really impressed with everything they do and, you know, their service is outstanding. Yeah, so, um, is just, just love every club in my bag, really. This is a pretty special place. I assume you've been here before, have you? It's a Scottsdale National. Yeah, we're definitely another day in the paradise. Yeah, it's an incredible setup, it really is. Have you been out to uh, Scottsdale National before? Have you, have you been I have here? not played here yet, no. No? Mm -hmm. What's your, again, first thoughts? I mean, first thought, just being here at this facility is just amazing. Thing. It's you know, it's unreal, isn't it? It's they have everything that a, a player could possibly yeah. ask for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to you know be out here track. Um, and the ST irons, nice the irons. I, I'm three days into my relationship oh, okay. with them, and let me let me tell you, I, I try to temper my enthusiasm because sometimes I can get overexcited. Yeah, yeah, we all get a bit like that. But they are incredible. Right. They, they, it's like the iron I've always dreamed of playing. Right, so what day is it, by the way? Thursday. Right, so a regular Thursday afternoon for the average golfer. Eating tacos <laughs> with this man alongside me, Ryan Moore, how are you? I'm doing great, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, having a bit of fun. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, it's always a great experience out here at uh, Scottsdale National. Andy, that was the most unenjoyable round of golf I've ever had playing with you. When I saw you this morning, I thought, I've got a pigeon, I'm going to beat the living hell out of you. You took my money, uh, at least you can say I'm honourable and pay you and good luck. And uh, I'll, I must have a I must have another return game to try and get it back. But all I can say, whatever you're doing, you're playing too much golf. I wouldn't buy a cent. I wouldn't put a cent in your business. I'd go bankrupt because you're playing golf every day. Good luck. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure was mine. It's done. And then the next part of the day was we went to play a golf course which has been built called the Bad Little Nine. And it should be called the extremely bad or the very, very bad little nine because it is an absolute killer. The idea is it's a nine hole par three course and it's set up extremely difficult. Um, and I played with uh, three uh, journalists from the, uh, America in it and uh, it, was, it was tough. <laughs> That's a surrender flag, that is. <laughs> Just show me the bar. <laughs> right this way, sir. <laughs> And I probably played it uh, with the wrong attitude, I suppose, because it killed me. Uh, I found it so, so difficult. Uh, my favourite part was that they had a, s a station set up on, I don't know, what, about the sixth or seventh hole, which was uh, serving margaritas. Uh, do you have any sport one just what you need after this place okay. uh, kicks you in the teeth one. several times over. <laughs> I might just stay here, to be honest with you. <laughs> this is the best fun I've had so far. Sometimes Having a drink. Cheers. Cheers. That's nice as well. Have you tried it? Nice. Just what we need to just pitch up here, that'll do us. <laughs> <laughs> just spin the camera around there, Trace. Just have a look yeah. at this. Is uh, I'll tell you what, it's a great for photographs. This now with them shadows. I could have stayed there all day, to be honest with you, because it was a tough old thing, and it's a, it's all about being a bit of fun. And a, a fun is a key word as well that I've not referenced as, as far uh, yet. Um, but this is built for fun, it's built for playing with your mates to have a few drinks. The whole PXG thing and a lot of the ethos is all about bringing fun to golf and that's something that is mentioned throughout this whole thing. Bad little nine, back to our unreal accommodation as you've already seen, get changed, meet for dinner. And dinner was in a different clubhouse. Dinner and breakfast was in a clubhouse that, uh, was, um, that was called The National. So, we goes down for dinner. Quick change, everybody's come down, they're having a drink, we're out chatting around, waiting to be seated, and the tables are all uh, laid with name plates um, laid out, ready for where you go and eat your meal. So we're just chatting to people that we've met on the day, we're having a great time, it's been an unbelievable day as it stands. Uh, I go to have a look now at where we're told to be seated, I go and have a look at where we're seated, find my name tag, my wife's name tag, we're on a table of five. That table of five is to my left. I've got Bob Parsons sitting next to me. I've got, uh, his wife is sitting opposite me, uh, Renee Parsons, and we've also got Catherine Kirk from the LPGA who's sitting next to my wife. Now, I can't ever think of a moment in my life 
where I've been more taken aback in terms of what my what in hell is going on. This day just keeps on getting more surreal by the minute. It just these things just don't happen. And and the point is that th- this this man comes over, says hello like you've known him for 10, 15 years. Um, he is so, so friendly. Sits down, just chats about how the day was going, very much at ease, as was his wife, lovely person again. And uh, Catherine Kirk as well, sorry, Efren LPGA, uh, unreal, so, so friendly. They're all part... Oh, uh, there's more professionals that we'll talk about, very, but you've seen Anna Norquist, uh, Leanna Strom, um, who else do we see there? Scott Langley. Um, they are all, and Catherine Kirk, they're, they're all so, so very friendly and, and all part of this kind of like PXG team. It's incredible how much effort they go to. I, you know, I, I, I've never experienced or known or understood that it was going to be like this at all. So we had dinner. Like I said, some great, great conversations and very, very surreal, which is the word that I will, without doubt, always mention when it comes to this trip. So, off to bed that evening, once again, not understanding quite what's going on in this whole thing and why this is happening to us. The next morning we get up, we go to breakfast, uh, we're in the National Clubhouse, we go and get our food and we pick a table. Uh, it was fairly quiet at that moment, we picked a table. Uh, there's two people sat in the corner and uh, one of them says, what's up? Is there something up? Have we offended you in some way? That person was um, Gary Player and his management team. And again, asked us to come and join them for breakfast. So it was breakfast with Gary Player, chatting about all things golf. I mean, I don't know how much more there is to come really, but there is, trust me, stick with me for just a little bit longer. And I know this is going on a little bit, but I've got to tell you all about this because it's, it is hard to put into words, and like I said, I'm filming this now because it's the first time I've had a moment to just draw a breath and just look back on it all and what happened. So, breakfast finishes, we go down to the driving range again where there's all kinds of activities going on. But basically, your tea box is set up, your name is laid out, your bag is laid out. Right, so let's try and get some perspective on what's going on here because uh, it's difficult to do so. I'm teeing up, I'm warming up rather next to Ryan Moore, Anna Norquist, Catherine Kirk, the list goes on and on. I mean, what is going on? On every clip, I think I've probably used the word surreal because that's how it seems to be at the minute. Uh, Every day, there's a different surprise. And I think, I can't confirm as yet, but I think I could be about to play golf uh, on the other courses it's known at Scottsdale National with Ryan Moore. So yeah, there's another surreal moment for you. What's going on? There's media there, there's all kinds of TV crews going on, filming different bits. I've filmed all different bits uh, with, with media crews as well uh, on the day previous, which I forgot to mention. Um, I'm warming up, I've got Catherine Kirk to the left of me, um, who hadn't arrived when I get there, but she comes, morning Andy, how are you doing? You know, what are you thinking of the clubs, this, that and the other? It's just standard chat. And then at some point in the last half an hour, I've been told that I'm gonna be playing golf, my 18 holes, um, it's going to be with Ryan Moore. Now, I think Ryan Moore is a fantastic character, a very, very laid back and chilled man. And if there was anybody I wanted to, I, I could have chosen to play golf with, it would have been Ryan Moore. We're then, it's a shotgun start, we all get together and we all whiz off and find our tee box to start to play golf. And Ryan Moore is probably exactly as you would expect him to be. Like I said, very laid back, um, incredibly friendly. Um, incredibly humble. It just seems to be a word. I've never seen so many people all with this kind of friendly attitude in one place. They're breeding happiness up there. There's so many smiles on people's faces. I mean, I know the clubs are good, but I mean, there's literally, these people are some of the happiest people I've ever spoke to. I mean, every minute of the day, every t- everyone you see, everyone you're walking around, throughout this three-day experience is just so, so friendly. And Ryan Moore was exactly the same as that. And we had an unbelievable time uh, playing golf on a golf course that, again, is unreal. Right, okay, so this is, uh, as I said, the other course as it is named, and it is absolutely spectacular. It's immaculate. 
it's pretty much like everything you've seen so far so there is literally no stone unturned in terms of uh, how they cater for you uh caddy is fantastic um and like i said yeah i'm playing with ryan moore which again um and a bit of a shout out to him because it's quite well it's, i get quite nervous playing with uh, people uh, of that standard and uh he's made a great effort to make it. he's a really nice man um yeah really friendly very helpful uh, as is the caddy as well and uh and the minute having a spectacular day and uh i won't say surreal again but it's surreal as you can see there you know w we had a lot of fun the golf course itself is immaculate um you don't rake bunkers you you literally leave them as they are and then there is someone that's some magic genie that arrives and rakes the bunkers behind you and you don't see nobody no course maintenance on the course whatsoever not sure how it goes on but assure you i never went in a bunker that wasn't raked and that's what i was told happens caddy on the date was kale he was fantastic and i never a hold a single put if it wasn't for him because they were so hard to read and so different from what i was looking at um Thomas was fantastic as well. He had a he had a good day as I did. We both got the ball around pretty good, to be fair. And I was really happy with the way I played, which was a bonus. On, it was the icing on the cake, if you like, if you like. And um, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at my notes. At we finished. Sorry, I will finish off very very briefly. And I've got videos of all of this, by the way. So I've got videos of the round that I played uh, with Ryan Moore. I've got stuff there with Gary Player, which you've not seen yet. I've got the interviews with uh, Brad and Mike. I've got the interview with Bob. Um, I finished off, again, I was invited to go then down the following day. Uh, this was outside of the remit of the um, trip. I went down to PXG headquarters uh, in Scottsdale and we had a little tour around there, as you can see. And again, what a special facility that is. Um, Thank you to all the people, uh, one in particular who organised this, um, who, my contact who organised this uh, from PXD. I'm not mentioning no names from a privacy perspective, but uh, they certainly would know who they are. Uh, there are no words to show gratitude for this kind of thing because the trip was, like I said, something that I will never, ever forget. That is an obvious statement. Uh, it was way beyond what I ever expected. Um, I, was, I just have not got any words to explain and you know this video can be viewed in two ways I suppose um, the way I want it to be viewed is that I wanted to share this experience and show you uh, what has happened to me over the last few days I hope it doesn't look like uh, me recording a video say oh look at me look what I've done um, so yeah, if it does, then I apologise. But I wanted to share it with you. you know, for a f well, like most of you know that um, I'm extremely grateful that uh, the only reason I got this opportunity to, to do this um, is because of the support that the channel has shown me and you as individuals have shown me. So I'm extremely grateful at this point. Probably <clears throat> more grateful than I've ever been. Didn't see that big coming. I'm extremely unprofessional. It's fucked up my whole video. We can be about the swear word and uh, get back to reality. It's a golf trip and that's it. But it was very, very special. It's been a great few days. I'm going to leave it at that and hopefully <clears throat> I can find a way. I tidied up that end bit and uh, we can still use this footage. That's not me, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, comments down below. I've got one more day left in uh, in Scottsdale and I'm going to uh, enjoy that. We're in Old Town Scottsdale tonight, which I went to yesterday, which is really, really special. And uh, again, a place that I never really expected to be enjoying quite as much as I did, but we're having an unbelievable time. Right, thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you all soon.
Thank you. 